जय जय श्री राधे श्री वल्लभादेश की जय सब वैष्णवन को सादर और सप्रेम जय श्री कृष्ण द रीडिंग ऑफ आवर स्टोरीज ऑफ द एटी फोर वैष्णव फॉर डे वन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन वी आर इन द स्टोरी ऑफ कृष्ण दास विच इज वार्ता एटी फोर द अल्टीमेट स्टोरी ऑफ द एटी फोर स्टोरीज एंड इट्स भाव प्रकाश Here a doubt arises because Sri Govardhan Naji had not touched the offerings and it was Sri Gosai ji who accepted back the prasad and washed and wiped the lord's mouth. He then offered him the spiced pan leaves. Why did Sri Gosai ji not know that he was still hungry? Whilst he was eating the pan leaves, why did he not tell Sri Gosai ji that he was still hungry? Why did he not tell Ramdas? The answer given to this is that on that very day in Gokul In Sri Navanit Priyaji's temple, Sri Giridharji and his wife Shobha Bethi ji had prepared rice and dumplings and had the heart's desire to invite Sri Govardhan Nath ji there so that he might enjoy this unusual offering. Therefore, in his other Bhaktodaraka form, Sri Govardhan Dara had left Sri Giridharji ji and gone to partake of their offerings. Recognizing their intense desire for him to partake, he had gone there to fulfill his wish. Having accepted the offerings through his other form he came back up the mountain by then all the temple servants had already ta- had their mahaprasad shri gosai ji had partaken and taken rest inside the temple shri swamini ji asked him where had you gone please tell me shri govardhan ji told her i went to eat the rice and dumplings that shri giridhar ji and shri shobha bethi ji had prepared for me hearing this shri swamini ji also had the wish to enjoy rice and dumplings but the lunch offerings had already been made So Sri Swamini ji said to Sri Nath ji go and tell Ram Das that Ganga Bai's wishful look had polluted the offerings now why did she do this it was all in honor honor all in order to bring to perfect fruition some events and promises within the eternal leader it all led to Sri Gosai ji having to suffer separation for 6 months once in the leela Sri Thakur ji told Lalita ji i will come to see you in your forest bower Sri Chandravali ji heard him saying this and Sri Chandravali ji though very clever through very clever means and very lovely seva held him back from going there for a whole 6 months in her deep separation lalita ji suffered too much and became very thin when shri swamini ji heard about this she immediately took lalita ji with her to shri shri thakur ji she said to him you have caused my sakhi to suffer separation for 6 long months now you will have to stay under her thumb for a full 6 months Whosoever caused my sakhi to suffer such separation for 6 months will also have to suffer the same fate and actually not even be able to see you at all. Hearing this the lord was silenced. One sakhi heard about this and went to Shri Chandravali ji and told her all about it. Hearing this Shri Chandravali ji reasoned, "Shri Swamini ji is more illustrious than Shri Thakur ji and so I can't say anything to her." But Lalita sakhi Shri Swamini ji is more illustrious than Shri Thakur ji and so I can't say anything to her but Lalita Sakhi though Shri Swamini ji Sakhi was wrong to curse me I who am her equal because I am also Shri Swamini ji Sakhi and to make it so that I shall not even see Shri Thakur ji for a whole 6 months with this action Shri Lalita ji has actually wronged Shri Swamini ji because Shri Swamini ji and Shri Thakur ji are of one creation And Shri Chandravali ji appears from Shri Swamini ji's moonlike face. It is from Shri Chandravali ji that all the other sakhis appear. So Shri Chandravali ji resides at Shri Thakur ji's right side, and she is thus most superior. Therefore, Shri Chandravali ji stated, "Through this succession, Lalita ji has caused, has essentially insulted Shri Swamini ji. Now she will suffer a sudden death and be reborn as a ghost." Neither Sri Swamini ji nor Sri Thakur ji will be able to save her from this fate and no one else will be able to liberate her from that ghost body. She will have to suffer the consequences of cursing me. When this news was conveyed to Lalita ji she began to tremble with fear and she ran to Sri Swamini ji and fell at her feet. She told her everything. Sri Swamini ji immediately called Sri Thakur ji and said to him, "Look, 
Lalita G has fallen from her hands, so now please devise some plan to solve this problem. Sri Takuji, accompanied by Sri Swaminiji, then took Lalita G and the rest of her group of Sakis to see to Sri Chandravali's forest, Bawa residence. When she saw them arriving, Sri Chandravali G immediately rose, bowed to them, and gave them a raised seat on which to sit. She very lovingly worshipped the divine couple and honoured them offering them some lovely items to eat, followed by fragrant pan leaves. She stood near them with folded hands. The divine couple were very pleased and, holding her hands, drew her closer to them and made her sit, or made her sit down. Sri Swamiji said, Listen, Sri Chandrabhadiji, your love is most divine, and truly you and I are non-different. Sri Lalitaji is as much your Saki as she is mine. Therefore, please release her from the curse you have pronounced. Sri Chandrabhaji answered, Lalita Ji is truly one of our very own. Whatever has happened to her is for the purpose of manifesting Leela into the world. When Sri Lalita Ji is thrown into a ghost body, I shall myself liberate her, and this is my solemn promise. Lalita Ji fell at Sri Chandrabhaji's feet and supplicated, I know this has all come about through the wrong I have done to you. Sri Swamiji then pronounced, in the age of Kali, this whole group, in fact, all of our associates, will manifest on and around the Sri Giriraji mountain, and there and then all of this will be clarified. Hearing this declaration, Sri Swamiji, Sri Takuji, Sri Chandrabhadiji, and Sri Lalitaji were all very pleased. Among the participants and characters of the eternal Leelas, there is strong and divine affection. The curses given are also all divine, as are the jealousy and every other emotion. For they contain no trace of worldly When the pastimes occur on the earth, they are just a means to promote the Lord's fame and name, so that souls can attain him by singing of him and his pastimes. In this way, the spiritual can come to the material plane. The jealousy and curses that are seen in the world are bad and offensive. On the other hand, those within the spiritual plane have a higher purpose and are all actions towards spiritual development. This should be understood. It should be understood that it is only by the mere wish of Sri Swamiji and Sri Takuji that they all appeared around Sri Giriraji. There, Sri Acharyaji, a manifestation of Sri Swamiji, revealed the manifestation of Sri Govardhan Naji. In the eternal Leela, Sri Chandrabhaji appears from Sri Swamiji. In this very same way, Sri Gosaiji appears from Sri Acharyaji and Lalitaji came into play as Krishna Das, the manager. Sri Govardhan Naji appears in many forms, of which two are permanently inaccessible and accessibly manifest. One is the form whom Sri, whom Sri Acharyaji established in his temple on Sri Giriraji and the other is his Bhaktodarak form through which he grants joys to his devotees, for example, in the way that he played with Kumbandas and Govind Swami. Plus, he gives experience of his presence to accomplish the creation of us all over the place, wherever they may be. Therefore, when Sri Sa- Gosaiji was making the offerings to the Lord and Gangabai's impure vision fell upon it, in fact, the Lord did accept the offerings. For if he had not, then all those involved in the Seba who partook of the Mahaprasad would have been made to fall from their dharma, never to eat unoffered food. The Swarupa of the Lord, whom Sri Acharyaji had established there, did in fact accept the offerings. This explains why Sri Swamiji told Sri Govardhanaji to say that he did not accept the offerings because of Gangabai's because of Gangabai. It was in order to facilitate Sri Gosaiji's six month period of separation. Krishna Das shared much affection with Gangabai, and so it was Sri Gosaiji who had to accuse her and also who also spoke very sharply to Krishna Das, who then felt insulted. This process caused the separation of Krishna Das and Sri Gosaiji. To, which had to be. Therefore, Sri Swaminiji told Sri Govardhanaji to go and say that he was still hungry. Sri Govardhanaji went and told Ramdas. Ramdas knew nothing of these events, but when he went to tell Sri Gosaiji, the latter immediately felt that Ganga Bai's eyes had polluted the offerings. Sri Naji now wishes to bring to fruition the events between me and Krishna Das, and it will certainly come about. Therefore, I should now enjoy as much seva as I can can lovingly perform because soon it will become unobtainable then he straight away had his 
bath and decided to prepare rice and dumplings because, even though the Lord had already enjoyed the dish that had been prepared in Gokul, he had not yet enjoyed it on Sri Giriraji. Sri Gosaiji prepared and offered the lunchtime as well as the evening meal. When the seva was completed and Sri Takuji was resting, he thought to himself, Soon after this, Sri Govardhanaji's holy site and his Mahaprasad would be hard to get. Therefore, he picked up the basket of Mahaprasad and divided it into small portions in little earthenware pots, and in this way he gave everyone a small share. Sri Gosaiji also partook of the Prasad, and this is when he remarked that the Prasad was very tasty, to which, according to the wish of the Lord only, Krishna Das retorted sarcastically, You made it and you ate it, so it has to be tasty. What he really meant was that you didn't ask me and went ahead and prepared the offering. And it was you alone who offered it to Srinachi, therefore the ensuing good fortune is all yours. Gosaiji, Krishna Das hit Sri Gosaiji with this remark. Then Sri Gosaiji retorted, actually we are suffering the results of your enjoyment. Here Sri Gosaiji had two things to say. Firstly, that Krishna Das loved Ganga by and held had allowed her to sit in such a place that her glance fell upon the offerings, otherwise she would not have been allowed to sit in such a place. Also, you, Lalita, got Sri Swamiji to curse Sri Chandravaji myself, and this was all you're doing, and now I have to suffer the results. He is also saying that he knows that Krishna Das's luck was about to open up, and that he would have to reap the results of any of his actions. You know what you have to do, because it is all coming from the Leela, and now you will do it. Part 7 continued. Krishna Das was not at all happy to hear of all this. He decided to stop Sri Gosaiji from even being able to see Srinachi. He pondered upon a way to make this happen. Sri Gosaiji's elder brother, Sri Gopinachi, had a son named Sri Purushottamji. Krishna Das went to meet him and said, You are the son of the elder son of Sri Acharyaji. Why are you sitting silently here? You should be involved in the seva of Sri Naji. Sri Gosaiji has taken over, but really you are the head of the lineage. Sri Gopinachi said that it was not within his power to disturb Sri Gosaiji's position. Krishna Das told him to bathe and then to accompany him up to Srinaji's temple where he would arrange for him to do all the seva of the Lord. Two hours before the Utapan or early afternoon services, Sri Gopinachi bathed, went up to the temple with Krishna Das and sat there. Krishna Das went down to the foot of Sri Giriraji and sat by the Dandoti rock. Just then, Sri Gosaiji bathed and ready came to that place. Sri Krishna Das said, Sri Purushottamji has bathed and is in the temple. He is the true lineage holder. You can only go up to the temple if he calls you there. For now you are forbidden to go up there and you will not have the holy sight of Sri Govardhanaji. Sri Gosaiji prostrated to the temple flag and recalling all the Leela events went to Parasoli. He stayed here and began to suffer great separation from his beloved lord, Bhav Prakash. Sri Gosaiji did not go to Gokul where Sri Navanit Priyaji reigns because of Sri Swaminiji's statement in the Leela that he, that is Sri Chandravaliji, would have to suffer six months separation from both the lord and from her. If he had gone to Gokul, this situation would not have come to fruition. Therefore, he realized that it would not be very difficult, that it would be very difficult to meet the beloveds for the next six months. And so he sat down on in Parasoli to wait it out. Aj Kenanda Kije, JJ Shiradi, Subvaishnava Uncle Jay Shri Krishna, JJ Shiradi. Concluding our story for today.